This is the step-by-step -step guide to exactly how I use AI to create t-shirt designs. I'm going to walk you through the entire process from selecting the software to prompting to all the way through to the end design. And make sure you watch until the end because I'm gonna reveal a really cool feature in Midjourney that you can use to level up your designs. Let's jump in. Whenever I'm creating designs with AI, the first question I have to ask is, do I want the AI to generate text or do I want to just generate one of the design elements with AI and then maybe add the text later? Now, in some cases, you might not want text at all with your designs, and that's perfectly okay. But I first asked that question because some AI art generators are better at interpreting text than others. When you're looking into creating t-shirt designs with AI, there are a lot of different softwares that you could look to. Some of my favorites are Midjourney, Ideogram, Dolly2, Leonardo, there's even some of the new Adobe Firefly and some of the generative fill options in Adobe Photoshop that are also really, really good. But when it comes to creating high quality and high selling t-shirt designs, I look to two main art generators, and that's gonna be Midjourney or Ideogram. I believe these are gonna be the best options for the majority of people if you're wanting to create t-shirt designs. As I mentioned, we first need to ask the question, do we want the AI to generate text or do we just want to generate one of the design elements or some of the design elements with AI? And so in this demonstration, I'm going to recreate this design right here. This is a viral design that's selling really well right now. And I'm gonna see in this video if I can recreate it with AI and walk you through the process of how I did it. So if I wanted to create this design, there is two different ways that I could go about it. I could either try to have AI create the entire design, or I could just try to have AI create these little icons, and then I could add the text after. So I first wanna demonstrate how I would approach creating this if I want the AI to generate the text. And I would do that with a software called Ideogram. Ideogram is one of my favorite softwares, and I think it's best when you want ease of use and you want it to generate text. You can see as I scroll through some of the top images right here, you can see how well it does with text. Let's look at this image right here. It says, never underestimate the power of a side hustle. And here's the prompt over here on the right that they used. Now they ask Ideogram to display this text, never underestimate the power of a side hustle. And it did a phenomenal job uh, interpreting that text perfectly. As we go back, we'll see a bunch of examples of this. You see summer vibes right there. This is basically a finished t-shirt design right here in Ideogram without doing any really additional work. So this is kind of that first option that I would go to if I want it to generate text. Now, there's a lot of situations where I don't want it to do the text. I want to be in control. But let's first see if we can get Ideogram to generate something like this uh, by not doing any additional work. So inside Ideogram, we're going to ask it to create something like this. And we're gonna do our best to describe it. So let's go over to Ideogram and right here at the top, we're just gonna type in uh, exactly what we want. Here's the first go that I've come up with for the text in Ideogram. I've said a t-shirt design with three small black icons underneath text. The first icon is a water faucet. The second icon is an RV. The third icon is a wall plug. The text above the three icons is black and distressed. It reads just here for the hookups white background isolated. The only thing I'm gonna change here is put this in all caps just to see if it will interpret that, just here for the hookups. So we're gonna leave it like that. This is gonna be our first go round. We're gonna click on generate and we're just gonna go for it. Now, the other thing I'm going to change, I'm gonna change this to nine by 16, then I'm ready to click generate. <laughs> If you wanna learn how to prompt better in Midjourney, Leonardo, Ideogram, or any AI art generator, I wanna give you my free AI prompt guide that gives you over 170 prompts you can use in your AI art generation software to get better print on demand, t-shirt, and apparel designs. There's different styles and different words in there that'll help you get creative with your prompts and end up getting better quality art. Just go over to carryegler.com slash prompt prompts to download this prompt guide completely free. I'll leave the link down in the description and you can go get that completely free. Back to the video. 
Okay, we've got our design back and that was a little too easy. Uh, the AI almost did it perfectly. So you can see right here, it says just here for the hookups. It interpreted the text in this example perfectly. It gave me the exact icons I was looking for. Uh, the only thing I would really need to do for this one is if I wanted to, is I could erase this, uh, these, these words down here at the bottom, but essentially like this is ready to go. I think this is a really cool design. Now, of course I could regenerate this. I could do a lot of different things. I could use this one as inspiration for another design. I could adjust a lot of things in the prompt. So it even formatted the text just like I wanted it. It said just here for the with hookups bigger below it, just like on the t-shirt design that I was trying to model. Now let's look at the other example of how I would create some of these images with AI and then maybe add my own text. Now, maybe we get this design and it's just not the font we want or it's not exactly the right layout or we wanna tweak it in some way. This is gonna give us more control over the AI design. So for this example, I'm gonna use Midjourney and I'm on the Midjourney Alpha web version, which is available to anybody who has generated over 100 images with Midjourney. And so I'm gonna use the Imagine section up here. And in this example, I'm just going to generate each icon on its own. So what I'm gonna type in is I'm gonna type in a small black icon of a water faucet with a drop of water coming out. Now I'm gonna go to my settings over here and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn the stylize way down like to zero. Uh, we're gonna start there and see how, how it does. We're just gonna keep it in a square. So we've got a pretty simple prompt here, a small black icon of a water faucet with a drop of water coming out. We'll go ahead and hit enter and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I went ahead and just did all the prompts here and I'll walk you through uh, how I got to really what I was looking for. So the first thing that I got was this right here and I think it did a pretty good job. And this one right here on the end here was the closest to what I wanted. So I went ahead and just hit this very strong button and it gave me some more generations right up here. And I was able to get this one right here that I think is gonna work great. Either one of these are gonna work great for our design. I also put in a small black icon of a recreational vehicle and a small black icon of an RV, and you can see what I got. I think there's a bunch of really good options here. Specifically, this one's pr probably the closest to what I want, so I'm probably gonna go with that one. Lastly, I asked Midjourney for a small black simple icon of the end of a phone charger cord, and I really like this one, so I think I'm gonna end up going with that one. I clicked on the very strong button just to get a few different generations, and I got these right up here, which are also pretty good, but I think I'm gonna end up going with this one. Now, the reason I like doing this it this way is kind of, as I mentioned earlier, is it gives me so much more control over the design, right? I can get the exact icons that I really want by playing with the software a little bit more, changing some of the settings, changing some of the prompts, and I'm able to get to an image that's closer to what I'm looking for specifically. And it's not exactly like the other design, but that's not really the point. I wanna create an original design that might be a little bit different. So this is how I can do that. The next quick thing I need to do is just save all these icons to my computer. So I'm just gonna click on them, I'm gonna open them up, I'm gonna right click, and then I'm gonna click on uh, save image right there and that's just gonna download it to my computer. The next thing I need to do in my design process is I usually need to upscale the AI images. Now, in this case, I'm using the icon so they're pretty small, so I may not need to upscale these images because they're gonna be pretty small on the t-shirt design, but in most cases, before you finalize the design or before you edit it in something like Canva or Photoshop or something like that, you're gonna wanna upscale the design. You just wanna make the design bigger so that it's really good quality when it gets printed out on a t-shirt. So the software that I like to use is completely free and it's called Upscale, just spelled kind of funny. It's U-P-S-C-A-Y-L. You can go to upscale.org to actually download the software. You can click on desktop up here and you can just download the free software, uh, which is really cool. Go down here, select your uh, type of device, and you can just download the software. Now you're looking at what the upscale software looks like on your computer. It's a really simple software. Now there's a few things you can do with it, for, but for most cases, you really just use, need to use the basic features. So all we need to do is first select an image. So I'm gonna hit the select image button, 
I'm going to upload uh, one of my icons. Let's upload this little RV right here. Then you're gonna select the model. Now this is actually gonna recreate the image. So, you know, when you're upscaling with AI, it's not actually like making the image bigger, it's recreating the image in a bigger version. So this has some different models. Now, I usually just use the first one. I haven't had any issues with it. I think the upscaled images look great with just the first one. So I would just leave it as is. Then you're gonna have this image scale option. Now, if we scale it up past 5X, you're gonna see that it gives us a little bit, a little warning and says anything above 5X may cause performance issues. Now, generally, you're only, need to get, you're only going to need to go 2X to 4X at the most. You can see right down here that it's gonna to go to 4,096 by 4,096. I'm just gonna stick this one to 2X. That's gonna give me 2,048 by 2,048. And I wouldn't have any issues with that. Lastly, we select the output folder and we just click on upscale and it's gonna make our image way bigger. The last step in our process is I'm gonna bring my AI icons or my AI created art into a software like Canva. Now you can use Kittle, you can use Photoshop. I mean, you can use GIMP, PhotoP, Inkscape, whatever you wanna use, but I'm gonna bring my AI image into, uh, in this case, Canva. This is generally my go-to, kind of what I use. So I'm gonna drop in my three icons right here into Canva. Okay, you can see my three icons in Canva right here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the background on these icons. One thing I love in Canva is the background ground removal is so easy and it's so good. So I'm gonna click on edit photo over here on the left and I'm gonna click on BG remover. So I click on that and after just a few seconds, it's gonna completely remove the white background that's in my uh, each of my icon images. Another quick thing I wanna do after I've removed my background is on this little faucet, there's actually a little shadow underneath here that I wanna remove. So I'm gonna click on this faucet, I'm gonna click edit photo and I'm gonna use the magic eraser button. When I get here, I can adjust my brush size and I'm just gonna erase this little part right here. I'm gonna wait a few seconds and it's just gonna erase that for me. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna size up and just make some minor adjustments to my icons and get them in the right place. I'm gonna click on the text button over here on the left. I'm gonna hit add a text box. We're gonna do two text box because one of our lines is a little bit smaller just here for the, and one of our lines is bigger hookups. So I'm gonna start with the small line. So I've got a little text box right here. I'm gonna type out my text just here for the, and now I need to select a font. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna make this bigger. Let's just put it up to 100, maybe a little bit smaller than that. Let's go 80. And let's look through some of these fonts. So if I wanna go with that distressed looked, I just typed in distressed. I could also type in something like grunge. It's gonna come up with a bunch of these different, uh, different fonts. So let's go with this one for now. So we'll scale this up. Uh, we can also just pull it out like this and that will scale it up for us. So let's start with that. Now to make this simple, I'm just gonna duplicate this one. I'm gonna click on it, Control C to copy it. And then I'm gonna Control V and just paste it right there. I'm gonna change this one to hookups. And we need to size this up. So I'm gonna pull this out, try to get it kind of the right size, something like that maybe. Let's move all this down just a little bit, kind of center it up. And then we need this to also be the same size, something like that. And we'll just kind of put it down here, right about there. And just like that, that's pretty much our finished design right there. We've got it pretty close and we were able, even able to make a couple adjustments uh, to create icons that we liked a little bit more. The last thing I need to do to make sure this is ready for print on demand is when I click the share button up here at the top right in Canva, I'm gonna click on download and I need to make sure the transparent background button is selected. So right here, I'll click this transparent background and I need to make sure that my sizing is big enough. I'll generally go with something around two on the sizing to make sure it's big enough for print on demand. I'll click on download and my design will download to my computer. I've got the finished design pulled up here. You can see it on my computer. Now, the reason it's so dark is because this, all of this gray around it is transparent. So this is a completely transparent design and I always want my designs to be transparent because that's how they'll work uh, on t-shirts. You won't have any like box around the design. So that's my process from start to finish using AI to go from nothing to a completed design. 
as promised, I wanna also tell you about a crazy feature in Mid Journey that allows you to have consistent people and consistent characters across your designs. Click here to watch a full video on the consistent characters feature in Mid Journey.